Okay, so now that we've gone through a brief review of vectors and tensors, let's start using those uh, to describe deformation in a, in, a, in a material. So before we can do that, we need to actually talk about what reference frame we want to use. So what I'm showing you here in this figure, if you look at the left-hand side, you'll see what's referred to as an Eulerian reference frame, and on the right-hand side is a Lagrangian reference frame. Both represent the same deformation, but we're going to see how they, um, uh, what they are looking at in each reference frame and how they differ. So let's look at the Eulerian first. The Eulerian here, you can see the original material uh, is gray, and it's deformed to some rounded arrow here uh, as it, you know, below. And what I want you to note here is that there's this grid overlay. And the reason that is, is because in an Eulerian reference frame, we're looking for what is happening at a point in space. So what goes in and out of that location in space. Um, so for example, let's take uh, this point right there and say what, what is happening to that point as, as deformation happens in space. And so if we go back down here and look at the same point, here it is. We can see that now the, the once was material in there, now there's not. Uh, and presumably uh, there's some flow that would happen in time that would describe uh, that material moving out of that location in space. So the upshot of the Eulerian reference frame is that it's going to track the what happens, let's say, at a point in space. Okay, Material can move in and out, but the point that is being uh, examined doesn't change. In contrast, if we the Lagrangian frame says, I want to track what happens to a, a material point in space or a material particle. So let's, let's take this particle, let's take this center particle here and ask what happens to that particle during the deformation process. And we come down here, we see that, well, it, it deformed and it deformed to the right. So the Lagrangian reference frame, they, they, remember, they both are showing you the same deformation, but they're looking at it from um, different perspectives. One says what happened to the point in space. One says what happens to the particle of materials. So this the Lagrangian side is going to track what happens uh, to a material point or we can also call it just a particle of material. Okay, you'll notice that um, in the Eulerian case here, it shows it as a, that typically it's for a fluid formulation and the Lagrangian is typically for a solid formulation. There's a reason for that. The main reason is that when we look at um, stresses in, in a fluid, the stresses are not dependent on the history of that material. So it doesn't really matter where the, a particular point of fluid came from. It just matters what's happening at that point in space at that time. In contrast, uh, if we, from what we know, hopefully about solids and and uh, deformation mechanisms in solids, like dislocation motion and things like that, we know that in a solid material, the stress that is in that material is absolutely dependent on the history of deformation in that material. You know, if we think of something like uh, Damascus steel that's folded over and over and over again to give you uh, a really strong material, what we can what we need to be able to do to predict what the stresses are and, and also the strengths is to be able to say, what was the history of that material? How did a material point move back and forth and back and forth? Because if we can't tell that, we can't possibly tell you what the material behavior should look like. So we're going to focus from in, in this class in the Lagrangian reference frame because um, all the things that we are going to look at, the, the stresses that we care about are going to be dependent on the, the deformation history. Okay, so now let's go ahead and uh, just talk about some, some definitions of the motion of a continuum body. So what I'm showing you here with the black curve is some uh, 
some material point defined as capital X. And the material body is just uh, termed omega naught to tell you that it's the reference or initial state. And it has some boundary gamma naught. And under some deformation, so there's a mapping. We just call that mapping generally phi, which will depend on x, the material points in it, and time. And under this mapping, it, it uh, uh, moves to a new configuration called omega with some new boundary gamma. And this material point x moves to this new location, c. And we can define the we can define the way in which it moves that vector as the displacement. Hopefully that's pretty straightforward. Okay, so we can define the the uh, material point or coordinate. It's just going to be x or sometimes I'll just write it as x sub i and we can define the current location of that material point at time t as c or I'll sometimes just write it as c sub i uh, note that the material point can't change in time it, it, it is what it is it's just uh, uh, almost it acts as actually a label so let's just write that it acts as a label so forever and for always, whatever is happening at this point, we're tracking it and we're labeling it with its initial um, position in space. Uh, the current location at time t is given as, as we've shown here. And just note that it's depend, uh, time dependent. Okay. And we can define uh, the displacement of a material point u is going to be equal to just a, a vector subtraction it's c minus x or I might just write that as u sub i I'm just trying to give you a little um, uh, exposure to different uh, notation techniques c i minus x i Right, and note that these are all free indices, not repeated because they're not multiplied together. Okay. All right. So uh, let me expand this out further and just define this as the displacement is going to be a function of the material point because. The current position is a function of the material point, and it looks something like this. So I'm explicitly writing the time dependence here for you. Also note that the current position uh, is technically defined as the mapping. And we just simplify that to write it as the current position itself is the function. Sometimes we want to use phi if we're trying to separate out whether we're using uh, Eulerian coordinates or whether we're using, um, we're just trying to define the material point in space. But in this class, we'll just continue to use uh, C as, a, as the mapping function. And what we can also say is that uh, C at time t equals zero must be the reference configuration so that must be equal to x okay okay so what does motion involve let's think about that for just a minute okay so let's talk about this what does motion involve well if I just throw a baseball uh, obviously the baseball moves but until the batter hits the ball, there's not a not a great deal of uh, stress or deformation taking place in the ball. Uh, that's typically what we'd call a rigid body motion. 
And if we if we only had rigid body motion, then the current position, so and I'm going to subscript it as RB, uh, it is a function of x and t, uh, is just going to be equal to some uh, rotation tensor times uh, whatever the position in space is. So this is uh, rigid body rotation. plus C sub T, which is just a rigid body translation. Okay. RB translation. And if we were in physics one and we were doing, uh, you know, projectile motion or something, this would be uh, of interest to us, but we're not. We're taking a course on plasticity and viscoelasticity, so there must be more to motion of a body than just rigid body motion. And to think through that, we need to talk about uh, the deformation. So not only can the whole body move, but different parts can move, let's say, at different rates, creating deformations within the body. Okay. I'm going to draw a simplified version of that here. So if this is point, we'll call it X, and this is point, we'll call it C of X and T, then obviously we know that the line connecting them is U of X and T. Um, but, but what we want to know is what about, what if I were to take some small differential vector here, and let's call it D big X. And we want to know what happens to that differential vector in the current configuration. And so we'll call that something like D C. And so the question is, how do we relate D X to D C? And we, to do that, so how to relate uh, dx to dc. Well, we are going to do that by defining something called the deformation gradient tensor. And we define that as F sub IJ is equal to the partial of CI with respect to XJ, or if you like, F is going to be equal to partial of C with respect to X. So that's that's the relationship is this deformation gradient tensor and we can rearrange to get something that looks like DC uh, is going to be equal to F times DX or if you like index notation better DCI is equal to F I J D X J. Okay. So now we have a way to relate a differential vector in the current system to a differential vector in the reference system. This is very important and everything is going to be based on this relationship here. Okay. Okay, so next we're going to, in, in the next lecture anyway, we're going to talk about how do we actually use this information to, to define strain, uh, which is what the, the, the deformation measure that we're most familiar with from our, from our undergraduate career.